We all know how ridiculously expensive airport and airplane food can be. And with air travel costs up over 40% from last year, everyone is looking for ways to save money when they travel. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to bring your own food. You'll want to stay until the end for my favorite travel snack hack, which could also save you on baggage fees. Let's go. Hey y'all and welcome. If you're new here, I'm Christy, the Gen X Gypsy, helping you to travel better so you can focus on creating unforgettable memories. And today we're talking about one of my favorite subjects, food. Specifically, talking about what food you can bring onto a plane with you and how you should get that food onto the plane with you. Our first tip today is to make sure that the food that you pack is food that you want to eat. Don't pack what I call aspirational snacks. Like if you're not really eating carrots and apples and celery on a regular basis at home, but you think that you wanna eat all those healthy foods on the plane, well, I've got news for you. You're probably not going to end up eating those foods and you might end up splurging that $10 to buy a can of Pringles anyway because you get hungry and you just don't want the damn celery. <laughs> So pack things you know that you're going to eat, things that you do really like to eat on the regular basis, because that's what you're going to gravitate towards when you're traveling. The second tip is to stick to as much solid food as you can. And by solid food, I mean avoiding having to take dips or spreads separately because those things do count as liquids with the TSA. So if you wanted to bring hummus to stick those carrot sticks into, or you wanted to bring some peanut butter to put onto the celery, both of those items are considered liquids and you would only be able to pack 3.4 ounces of it and it would have to go into your liquids bag. So try to stick with things that are maybe already pre-made, like maybe you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or you bring like a vegetarian roll with hummus and vegetables and everything all rolled up together and made into a sandwich. And then you don't have to worry about catering to the liquids rolls. Now I do sometimes like to bring a salad that's you know made with heavier greens like kale because it stands up to a longer period of time without wilting but i'm gonna want to put something on it so one of the suggestions i've seen is to just bring a slice of lemon or a couple of slices of lemon and use lemon as your dressing on your salad with you know some spices that maybe are already on the salad and then you don't have to worry about getting a dressing through TSA security. So that is an option. I have not actually done that yet, but it is something that I will probably do in the future. This third tip is important as we are moving into cooler weather and perhaps you want to eat something warm while you are traveling and that is to bring a thermos or a stainless steel water bottle like this Contigo one and bring it empty through TSA security and once you're through security go over to Starbucks or another coffee shop or somewhere that would have hot water and ask them to fill the bottle up with hot water for you and then you can take that on the plane and you can bring instant oatmeal or maybe you want to bring your own coffee i like the starbucks vias because then you don't have to wait for the flight attendants to come around and give you coffee you can have coffee when you want another thing is you could bring some instant soups and have some soup on the plane especially if you're feeling a little chilly <laughs> although i get a little hot on plane so i don't know that i would want to be eating soup on a plane. Let me know if you're somebody who likes to eat soup on a plane. I mean, I like to drink coffee, so I don't know, is there really any difference drinking hot coffee or drinking hot soup? I guess not really. But let me know, would you eat soup on a plane? A fourth tip, if you want to really level up your flying experience, is to pack snacks like you are flying in first class. A simple charcuterie board type <laughs> items is one of my favorite. I mean, just saying charcuterie makes me feel kind of highfalutin. What kind of highfalutin talk is that? I'll use these takeout containers that I get from the sushi restaurant or the Chinese restaurant and I'll reuse them and I'll I'll just add like some jerky or some pieces of ham or turkey and then some cheese and some crackers and maybe some grapes or blueberries or some olives 
throw in some nuts, but maybe stay away from peanuts because there are a lot of people who are highly allergic to peanuts. Just put something together that's like a little bit of a graze board that you can take on the flight with you. And that is something simple that you can eat a little bit of and then put away and then pull it back out when you get hungry again. Another option that makes me feel like I'm in first class is when I bring along one of my pasta salads or my rice salads that I make. I make a Mediterranean one that uh, is pretty stable so you don't have to worry about keeping it chilled. And I just include like feta cheese and some tomatoes and cucumbers and olives, chicken if I want to throw meat in there, some kale maybe. And I just mix it all together and that makes a really good room temperature salad that you can eat when you are flying. And it's really filling. So for those longer flights, I would suggest something like that. Or like I mentioned earlier, some of the wrap sandwiches that you can make ahead of time too. I'll put the recipe that I make. I mean, it's kind of different every time I make it, but I'll put the basic recipe in the link below. Now, I had mentioned somebody said that they didn't know where they could go find the links and I found out that they were watching these videos on their TV. If you're watching the video on your TV, you don't have access to the description that's below the video and that's where the links are kept. But if you are on your phone or your laptop or desktop, you can just go below the video and there's a description box and there's an arrow that says see more and that's where all of this information is that I keep talking about. Just so you know where to go look for those and I will have that recipe below. The one thing you don't want to forget with these snack boxes is a piece of chocolate. I know, you gotta have something sweet at the end of it all, right? <laughs> if you are flying internationally, there are some rules about what types of food you can bring onto the plane in different countries. So I would encourage you to do research if you're getting on a plane in Europe about what you can bring. Now, if you're getting on a plane in the United States to fly to Europe, they're not gonna be that concerned about what you were bringing on the plane other than you know, as long as you meet those liquids rules and such that I talked about. However, once you get to Europe, you will need to have eaten all of the meat and dairy products that you brought with you because they're not allowed into the European Union countries. So if you're bringing jerky or chicken or some summer sausage, you just need to make sure that you consume all of that and your cheese before you get off and you need to declare stuff at customs. Do your research though, because every airline is different, especially when you start going overseas. And finally, my favorite snack hack is to go grab a bag from a location that is in your airport that you're flying from. Like Starbucks is in most airports in the United States. So I just went to my local Starbucks and I grabbed a Starbucks bag. This way you don't have to pack your snacks in your personal item or your carry-on bag, which can be really challenging to get to once you are on the plane. And it looks like you bought the food at the airport. So the airline is not going to give you pushback for bringing an extra bag along with you. This is especially important on those budget airlines like Spirit or Frontier. They can't ding you for another piece of baggage if you're carrying a bag with food that you're bringing from the airport because they can't make you have to buy the food on their airline, or at least not yet anyway. And this way you can pack all your snacks in your Starbucks bag. You can put that extra Contigo water bottle in here that you might wanna fill up with hot water later. And it will make it so much easier to get to your food once you're in the plane and you've got all your stuff under the seat in front of you. This is by far my favorite snack hack to do and it might just save you a little extra baggage fee because if you're trying to shove all of your food into your personal item or your carry-on you might end up having to bring an extra bag you can't bring like an extra cooler bag or a lunch bag because they're going to count that as an additional piece of luggage pick up a bag from a restaurant or a place that is in the airport and use that to pack your snacks in 
and who knows you might even be able to squeeze a few other items inside this bag as well <laughs> i would like to add one final note on things to refrain from bringing onto the plane in addition to peanuts are smelly foods like tuna fish and hard-boiled eggs now i know they are great protein sources but they can be really really offensively smelly to some people and one of the big no-nos and unwritten rules of flying is to not bring anything smelly on the plane. If you'd like to know what the other unwritten rules of flying are, check out this video next. Thank you so much for watching and bon appetit.